I've been sent a couple of these data video time-based correctors TBC 1000s again. Let's see, no video output, check in out to get video signal to get it to component and put to computer, see if you get output. I don't know why there's a lot of things written there, but basically I don't think it's getting any video output and I can already tell over here, right here, We've got a swollen capacitor right on this, which is like a main power portion of this board. So we're going to pull this board out and inspect these other larger capacitors over in this area. These tend to go bad too and see if any of the other capacitors look bad and then we'll give it some tests. Um, I've got my tool right here, this ESR meter that tells me the capacitor value, if it's good or not without removing it from the board. So I can test these electrolytics just by pulling these boards out. Well, here's our main video board. And a cl upon closer inspection, you can see all kinds of electrolytic fluid that's oozed out. Check that orange crap out right there. Every one of these larger 16 volt, 1000 microfarad caps has gone bad. Those are the most common ones to go bad. So I'm gonna pull these I'm going to test the other capacitors around here, but those are most likely the only ones that go bad. And then this one also is reading bad. So the, we're going to replace those and replace this board as two definitely bad ones. We'll get these caps removed and get the area cleaned up. And then I'll come back and show you what it looks like with nothing there. All right, well, I pulled all these capacitors out of the little device here. And there were tons of bad ones. Check out some of these really bad ones. Those are the ones that were stuck to the board with really old, dried up electrolytic fluid. Quite a few of those. Some of the others were cone shaped. Let's see if I could find something. See how that's cone shaped? That's definitely done. And then some of them don't look like anything's wrong with them, but they tested bad with the meter. So I had to replace all those. Let's move on over to the time base corrector itself. And if we look over in this area, this is where those bad capacitors were originally. You can see there's still some of that just caked on residue. It's almost like some kind of epoxy at this point. I wasn't able to get it off any more than that. I did thoroughly clean it and everything should be good. All the solder joints look nice. I even had to replace some capacitors on this card over here. A bunch of these had gone bad. And these, these, go, these two right here also go bad a lot for some reason on this card. All right, let's try a test now. You can see everything's hooked up. We're just going to power it on. Power on our CRT and hopefully it'll just start running. So starting off, we've got S-Video in our monitor down here. If we switch that over to A, that's our composite video. So it's got simultaneous switching. So both those are outputting video. This is our input over on this side. So we know we're getting good signal in and a good signal out. Now I'll just take a minute and test every single one of these outputs. And I'll test the composite video input also. All right, well, this one's working great. And again, those capacitors are definitely the issue to always check on this device if you ever find one. So everything else checked out perfectly. Everything's working fine on this one. We're going to close it up, and then we're going to pull out the other one that I've already serviced, take a look inside of it, test it the same way we did with this one, and then hopefully be done with both these time-based correctors. Now, here is time-based corrector number two. It's already been recapped and serviced. I did have the ferrite core removed just for a minute so you could take a better look in here. The power board did have to be completely recapped on this one. All three of those capacitors were bad. And then over here, these larger capacitors all went bad. All seven of them. There's a red one right there too. And they were bulging, but thankfully they didn't leak onto the board at all. So we didn't have any issues with a dirty board or any damage to the board. And this board was also pretty clean. Well, they had to recap the two big ones. And let's go ahead and power it on. 
it's working the light should kick on here you can see we've also got an LED light that switches on and off right here if it's working let's turn on the screen and see what we have we have audio we have video this is composite NTSC and there we go we've also got S video working so I'll just run through and test the rest of these outputs put the ferrite cores in place and then we'll close this one up and we'll have two serviced units ready to go all right ladies and gentlemen that is how you fix the time base correct or TBC 1000 from data video this is still quite an expensive device again we've got an input here for composite video left and right stereo audio and then our S video input and then we have outputs on the back for composite video there's four of those four left and right stereo outputs and then four S video outputs if you have one of these and it's not working check the same capacitors we did in this video it's very common to have those same capacitors go bad quite a bit if you want more information I'll link the past videos I've done on this device because it's the same story every time with this device those capacitors just go bad and sometimes they blow up and cause more damage thanks again for watching everybody I'll see you next time with some more retro content